Well, uh, we're going to create a new project, and the goal of this project is to be able to create a dynamic birthday card for somebody where we greet the person depending on what their name is, and we're going to put a different number of candles on the cake depending on how old they are. So let's get started. I'll go ahead and click on Create and make a new Scratch uh, project. Now as this comes up, the first thing that we always want to do, uh, we want to go ahead and plan out, uh, let's decompose the problem that we've got, right? So um, the first thing that I'm going to need to do, uh, I've got my cat, and my cat, I'm going to go ahead and name it. It's always a good idea to name your sprites, especially once you start getting lots of sprites so that they're not all uh, unnamed sprites. So the cat is going to, let's say when the green flag is clicked, we want to do something, right? So the first thing we want to do is we want to say, uh, hello, what's your name? We'll greet the user as we have them. Um, once they have that name, then what we're going to do is we're going to um, say hello and whatever their name is. So this is our first instance of using a variable here. Uh, the variable, we're going to call the variable name. Uh, it'll be the answer to uh, whatever the question is that was asked. Hello name, uh, I heard it was your birthday today. Um, and then we might say something like, um, we might ask, uh, how old are you? How old are you? And then at that point, what we want to do is uh, we'll go ahead and create a candle for each uh, year of age according to the user's response. Great. So that's kind of what our cat's going to do. Uh, of course, in order for this to work, we kind of need a birthday cake. In fact, maybe we'll have our cat say, I heard it was your birthday today. I made a cake. I'd love to decorate it, decorate it with some candles. And then we can ask them how old they are, right? So uh, with that in place, let me go ahead and get our other sprites here. So we're going to choose a sprite. Uh, we want a birthday cake, so let's look it up, and sure enough, we have a cake uh, right here. So let's grab that cake. I'm going to put the cat off to the side so we can ask a question. Maybe we'll put the cake kind of here in the middle. Uh, now we want to decorate the cake with candles. So uh, it already has candles, so let's go ahead and edit that. So go to costumes, and we really only need one costume for this cake, so let's get rid of the second one. And let's just name it cake uh, without candles. Um, so without the candles, what we're going to do is we're going to just select the candles from here and delete them. Now I can see there's a vestige of each of these other candles that was left, a little blue piece. So I'm going to go through and delete those individually. And I need the cake to be big enough to fit uh, depending on however many years old the person is, which could be many years old. So I'm going to go ahead and just fill up the screen with this cake. It'll be a big old cake. Kind of looks like a donut now. And I'll make the shadow... Uh, stretch that correspondingly as well. Great, so now I've got a cake right in the middle of the screen. It's awesome. Um, the cake doesn't really need to do anything. It just needs to sit there. Uh, but what we do need is, if I come back here and I look at this, I'm also going to need a candle. So I'm going to choose another sprite, come in here. I'll type in candle, and no candles show up. But if I remember on our cake, there were candles on the cake. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get another cake sprite and instead of a cake, I'm going to call this the candle. And I'm going to go ahead and edit this, and I'll edit the cake out of it. So I just have a single candle. So I'm going to go to my cake. I'll delete uh, the one with the unlit candles. I think I'll use the lit candle. And um, I'm going to select the cake this time and delete the cake out of there. And I'm going to delete all but one of the candles. I think I'm going to keep all of these candles in here. Great, and I'm going to move this candle. You can see right here in the middle of the screen, there's sort of a crosshairs. That's the middle. That's the registration point for this sprite. Well, that allows me to indicate where it's going to be. Um, so I've got that. That's a pretty good candle. Uh, to make it look like it's flickering, I think I'll make um, another one. So I'll call this uh, K. I'll call this candle flame one or flame big. And then maybe I'll make a small flame off of this. I'm going to duplicate the candle. 
And now I've got another one on here. So I've got that very same can. I'm going to take this. I'm just going to shrink down the, um, shrink that flame just a little bit. In fact, I think I'll flip it horizontally as well. And then as I go back and forth between these two, it might look like it's flickering. And I've got a candle that flickers that way. Great. Uh, so the candle itself, uh, we're going to clone the candle. So what we need to do is we need to plan out what's going to happen when it, each clone starts. Um, so I'll say when I start as a clone, what do I want to do? Well, first of all, um, I want to um, show the candle just like we did in our uh, example with our snowflakes. We're going to hide the main snowflake and we'll show the clones that we create. So I'm going to show the candle and then I'm going to move it uh, to a random position on top of the cake. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And then I think I just want to forever loop through my costumes. And I think that's it. Uh, all that I need to plan on. So let's go to the cat. Uh, the cat kind of starts this off when the green flag is clicked. Um, let's go ahead and grab an event and look for our green flag event. And the first thing we're going to do over here on our decomposition says, hello, what's your name? So I'm going to go to looks and I'm going to uh, say hello. And actually, if I'm going to say hello, what's your name? That's really, I need to sense something from the user. So I'm going to ask, what's your name? So I'll just say, uh, what's your name? And I'll wait for them to give me a response. And then with that response, I'm going to say hello, whatever their name is. I heard it was your birthday today. So I'm going to come back to looks and I'm going to say hello and put that hello in there. Now the difference here, I can say hello, but I need to be able to get whatever answer they give us. And this is my first use of a built-in variable in this case. Um, and the built-in variable, if I come over to sensing where they have ask, you'll notice right under ask, there's answer. Well, answer is whatever answer they gave us. We don't really care what the value is. We just want to be able to reference the variable answer itself. And this is one of their uh, Scratch's really useful built-in variables. So if I just put up here, I could say the answer for two seconds. So let's test this out. What's your name? I'll say my name is Peter. And it just says Peter. Okay, well, if I want to be able to say hello, Peter, and put things together, I need to go to operators. And I'm going to use the join operator. This allows me, me to put together words and to, and to form a sentence using a variable. So in this case, I'm going to join the answer together with hello. I'll say hello, answer. In fact, I'm going to join that together with the rest of this sentence. I'll put that at the beginning. So I'll say hello, whatever their name is. Uh, and they say, I heard it was your birthday today. Birthday today. Um, I'm going to put that in there and just say that for two seconds. I don't like to let my uh, sentences get too long here as we like to say a lot of stuff. So I think I will then say another piece of this. I'm going to say, I made a cake for you. I'd love to decorate it with some candles. And then I can ask how old they are. I'm going to go back to sensing and I'm going to go look for ask and under ask I'm going to ask again how old are you now and I'll wait for an answer and again what's going to happen is I'm going to get an answer and the response that they give me is going to replace whatever current value is in the answer variable um, and then what I need to do is I need to take however many times they've done that uh, however many whatever the number is that they've told me and re create that many clones of the candle. So I'm going to look for a loop and I'm going to repeat this. Instead of 10 times, I'm going to repeat it answer times. So again, I don't have to know exactly how many times, uh, whatever number it is that they put in here. I just need to know that this is where this variable goes and this is what makes this code dynamic. And uh, the thing that I'm going to repeat this many times, according to my plan over here, is I'm just going to create a clone each time. So I'm going to come over and look for a clone. I'm going to create a clone. But instead of creating a clone of myself, I'm going to create a clone of the candle, um, which is great. So if I were to do this now, I can test it out. I like to test things along the way. It says, what's your name? I'll say Peter again. Hey, hello, Peter. I heard it was your birthday today. I made a cake for you. I'd love to decorate it with some candles. How old are you now? And I'll say, hey, I'm 41. Great. Now it's going to make 41 candles. 
Of course, the candles all got made right behind the candle that currently exists. So let me stop this, and you can see those sort of disappeared. I'm going to take the original candle, and um, I'm going to use this here to figure out when I clone it where I want it to appear. I would say I'd like it to appear somewhere between here and here. And um, so if I were to look at this, I need to say, well, that is on the x-axis, negative 58. And on the x-axis over here, 126. So I want to appear somewhere between negative 58 and 126. So let me go ahead and grab my uh, when I start as a clone block. And when I start as a clone, the first thing I want to do is I want to show the candle. Uh, the next thing I want to do is move it to the random position. So I'm going to go to motion and I'm going to say go to. And I'm going to choose somewhere between, uh, what did I say, 126 on the x-axis and negative, uh, negative 58. And I'm going to go to my operator so I can grab the pick random. So I'll say negative 58 and positive 126. Um, now, I could just have them all right in a row, or if I wanted to have them maybe up and down a little bit, I could also do a pick random for the y-axis. So I think I'll do that just to make them spaced out a little bit more. I think I could see the candles going anywhere between here and here. So I, uh, here it looks like I'm at 1 on the y-axis, and down here it looks like I'm at negative 9 on the y-axis. So I'll say, hey, pick some random between 1 and negative 9 on the y-axis. And uh, only a thing that's left to do after that is forever loop through my costumes. So I'm going to go get a forever loop in the control. And uh, then I'm going to go to looks to see my costumes. And I'm just going to say switch to the next costume. Uh, now, I did notice the cat spoke a little bit quickly when I tested this the first time. So I'm going to, on these longer sentences, leave them up for three seconds. It'll be a little bit easier to read those. And let's test it out. What's your name? Okay, my name this time is going to be George. Hello, George. I heard it was your birthday today. I made a cake for you. I'd love to decorate it with some candles. How old are you now? And I'll say, well, I'm 41. And I'll let my candle create my cake. And I've got a dynamic cake with 41 candles that are making all sorts of uh, fire hazard there. Uh, and that's really it in its simplicity. I did notice uh, on the hello and answer, I didn't put actually any spaces between here. So I should probably put a comma and a space. And at the beginning of, I heard it was your birthday, maybe a period and a space. Uh, it makes that a little bit easier to read. Um, and I also probably need to make sure this candle gets hidden right at the beginning. So if I were to go to control for the candle or events, and uh, when the flag is clicked, just make sure I hide my main candle. Uh, I won't have one extra candle the whole time. So now if I were to go ahead and try this out, I'll say, uh, what's your name? And I can say my name is Larry now. Hello, Larry. I heard it was your birthday today. It's much easier to read. I made a cake for you. I'd love to decorate it with some candles. How old are you now? And I might say, hey, I'm 23. And now I get 23 different candles on my cake. So this is how you can use variables uh, that are already built into the system uh, to create a dynamic project uh, so that it's different and it adapts to the user and the input that they give. Uh, I want to show you a couple more things. You'll notice when I came over here to sensing and I grabbed answer, it's this pill shape. Well, you'll notice there are other pill shapes all throughout the code. In fact, pick random is a pill shape. Well, that's just a variable as well. And so Scratch is actually giving us a physical representation of variable. Anytime you see a pill shape in Scratch, uh, it's a variable. So username down here, current year is a pill shape, timer, loudness. In fact, up here inside of these other blocks where we have these pill shapes, color, and I can change that color. Those are all built-in variables that I can access and make use of in Scratch. Now that you know this, go out and have fun. Use some of these built-in variables uh, to make your, your projects more dynamic and more adaptable to your users.